today to talk to you about stop motion animation. This is something I use with my students from second grade up to fourth grade. I tried it this year with second graders and they absolutely love it. They just click to it so easily. I use the stop motion animation app on my iPads in my classroom. It's also available on Android devices. It's free and it's simple and easy to use. The app um, has a blue icon and when you click into it, students can create a new movie by just hitting the plus button and just taking photos with the red button. Now, what you want to remind your students of is that the animation is created by many different photos. So the more photos they take, the better. And the smaller movements they have with their characters or their props, the better. The photos appear here in the bottom of the iPad screen. They will just show up and students can scroll through to see how the photos look. When they're ready to watch their movie, all they need to do is hit the play sign and it will appear as a mo animated movie. I relate this to a flip book kind of when used to draw like little stick figures and then move the pages really fast and the students seem to grasp that idea because it allows them to just realize how it's moving and the more pictures they see they kind of get the concept that it's a lot of small pictures. What I usually do to start off my lessons is show them some cartoons that are animated by stop motion like Gumby and this kind of shows them that it's clay and it's actually somebody moving it and taking different pictures. What I also do for stop motion is I created this little template to get students to start brainstorming and thinking. So I want them to create a story that actually makes sense. So I have them think about their characters, um, their setting, what the problem is going to be, the action, how their story is going to end, basic story elements. And I write in there too, like what backgrounds will you need for your animated movie? What kind of props are you going to need? How are you going to move the characters or the cars or the animals? And then over here, I make them actually draw and map out a storyboard so that they kind of can see a visual of what they want happening um, throughout their animated story. And this just keeps them more on track, keeps them more organized. Some other um, tricks and tips that I like, I actually found these at Target. They're just play um, felt boards, but these are great for backgrounds and they actually come with little felt pieces which stick onto them and the students can start stop motion with these because it helps them move um, the pieces around and understand. So these little felt characters just stick really easily on and I start with this and have them kind of just move the pieces a little bit each time to show them how once you put it together it will look like they're actually moving. So if you ever see these at Target or another type of store, if you look on Amazon, they're just a felt playboard. So this is a great way to start off. Using cars is another great way. Um, this is kind of my bin full of animation equipment. So I got these cars from the Dollar Tree. You can get a couple in the pack. This is a great way to show kids that they can just move it very little. Um, I randomly found these ones at the Target dollar spot. They're bigger. So they're a bit nicer, they're wooden, and they're more visible. I found these recently at the Target dollar spot for $3. These are little small figurines. They come in princesses, mermaids. There is sports and superhero ones. So if you find something like this or ask for donations from parents or garage sales, using tiny characters is very helpful. The Dollar Tree has dinosaurs. I just organize these in Ziploc bags to keep them together, farm animals. So anything like this will help students move very tiny and take lots of little pictures. They can even build their own Lego characters if you have Lego people. I've had students build a background and props with Legos. 
If you have a green screen or a green construction paper, you can put that behind and then later use the Do Ink app to put in backgrounds from the computer and make it more digital. So this is just another trick I randomly discovered. If you happen to have any merge cubes or you see these on sale, they come with a stand inside and this can actually hold an iPad. So I think this is great because the students can have the iPad standing so this way it's not getting like moved all around and there's not shaking because if you're if you're trying to make an animated movie and you're moving or you're changing where the iPad is then your background is going to look different and it's not going to look as authentic. So the best thing is to find some kind of stand or some way to keep the iPad still. Um, but these are great. These merge cubes were at Walmart last year for only one dollar so now I have about 20 stands which is perfect for my iPads. So if you see anything like this or you can even somehow create something like this, this is going to help you a lot and help your students when you're making your animated movies. I also love this iPad case. It's from Rugged and it has a handle and it's super sturdy and it also comes with a holder so this is a great case to kind of help um, the students keep a straight hold on their iPad as well. So you can use stop motion animation in your classroom in many different ways. Students can create their own stories and then animate them. You can recreate scenes from stories you read as a whole class. You can show different ideas with history or um, science topics. So think of all the different things you can do and have fun and be creative. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or Instagram at Miss Tech Queen. You can also leave comments below. I'd love to hear from you and help out in any way I can. Thanks for watching.